Well, I don't think there's any question it's important. I mean, should the state be honored? Uh, should the state be required to honor contracts they engage in? Uh, should the public citizen be protected from the state just like uh, they are from another citizen? I mean, Abraham Lincoln said that. It, it, you know, Abraham Lincoln was back in the 1860s, and uh, in, 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 in Texas, you know, with regard to uh, honoring their contracts, you would think would have evolved uh, since the 1860s. And um, another interesting thing to note is uh, 38 states, most of them 1946 or before, have gotten rid of sovereign immunity with regard to contracts with the state. And, uh, and, and that's not a defense to stay out of court. We just want our day in court. We're not even allowed to be uh, heard in court. We just want our day in court. And you think of the absurdity when you say the Pledge of Allegiance and you're not allowed in court. Ten other states, uh, ten other states, uh, you get to court after you do some procedures, whether it's some mediation or something like that, you will get to court. Two states uh, re require legislative approval, Texas and Kansas. And uh, interestingly enough, if you do business internationally, you look to see if somebody's a member of the World Trade Organization. If they're not, you don't do business with them because their, their, their governments can't be counted on to uh, fulfill contracts. Uh, if Texas and Kansas were countries, they wouldn't be admitted to the World Trade Organization. And so their, uh, their policies, you like this, don't you? Their policies are congruent with, uh, with uh, North Korea, Somalia, Turkestan, several other countries I can't pronounce, and Micronesia. So um, it seems to me that uh, it's, it's about time they get in line with everybody else and uh, protect their citizens and, uh, and don't allow uh, the government to say, well, it doesn't matter if we screwed up. It doesn't matter if we induced you into a contract just so we could steal the money later and not fulfill it and say sovereign immunity. Well, I'm not a lawyer, uh, but uh, uh, you know, if the Constitution means anything, I think it should be pretty well a done deal. The thing is, we're not talking about the merits of the case. We're talking about whether the merits of the case even get to be heard. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't know uh, uh, entirely everybody's view on due process, but I do have a, a, an opinion on what the Constitution says and what the Pledge of Allegiance implies and. Uh, and uh, what sixth and seventh graders are taught in civics classes, and I think it is, is that you're going to have you, you're, you're going to have the opportunity to be heard. So I mean, if we don't have a good case, and if our claim's no good, and if we're wrong, which we're not, because if you read my book, which I recommend, if you buy the book, there's two chapters that are going to have memos from them that they're going to have uh, their words and sworn statements. They're going to have phone records. Uh, they're going to have text messages, <coughs> and. Uh, and uh, you know all this there's two sides of a story that's going to go out the window because there's one side and this is their words and this is what they said and this this is what they did and uh, but with that said the book's far more uplifting than that there's uh, two chapters on that 85 percent of it's on my path into coaching and uh, and uh, chasing the passion uh, as far as coaching but um, uh, do I think the chance of winning are high well, let's put it this way, in 48 other states it'd be a slam dunk and this wouldn't even be a question and this would have already been adjudicated. I think they actually do pretty good as far as educating athletes, I really do. I think, uh, you know, well, for, uh, you know, we had the highest graduation rate of any public institution in the country, so I felt like we did a good job. Uh, I, f I feel like um, Texas high schools, when you consider the melting pot that exists in Texas, I think do a fairly impressive job. I, uh, I would have to say that uh, you know no, no education process is uh, perfect, but I'd have to say uh, uh, you know with plenty of room to improve, uh, I think they do an admirable job when you compare them to the field. Difficult to say. I think they're on the bubble. I think they're on the bubble. Whether you know because right now there's. Uh, I think there's three B BCS conferences that aren't going to go anywhere, the Pac-10, uh, the Big Ten, and um, the SEC. I don't think they're going anywhere. Then I think they're, uh, they're going to pick up additional members and work their way to somewhere between 16 and 20 each. And then I think there will be another uh, conference, probably on the East Coast, probably some combination of the ACC 
in the Big East, and then they'll take a couple teams too. I think it's a close call. I think the best possible outcome for Tech is to be invited to the Pac-10. Okay.